So I've been kind of playing with this thing and I've got some tension on the inside. I don't remember if I had shown this any earlier, but I've got, it's a spool clamp that I've basically inverted so I can push. I'm using a long piece of wood to push against the back block and I have some padding up at the neck block. So hopefully I could have just a little bit of tension. Uh, when I turn this back over, what I really have started to see is that it moves, which is good news. And I'm putting some tension down on the neck. Um, I can really show it if I lift this up a little bit. And I would be worried if the top were moving with it, but the top isn't moving, just the broken part. So I can almost get it lined back up already. I'm not putting a whole lot of tension on there though. I don't want to uh, screw it up. What I'm starting to think about actually is I wonder if this has moved the neck angle. As of right now, the neck angle is bad, really bad, which leads me to believe it's the broken top that has allowed that neck to droop because if I put some pressure on it, that raises that neck angle back up and it comes closer to lining up the broken piece at the top. So that's good news. Um, I'm really not far off of getting it lined back up. It's actually already closer, I think, than it was when I started. Uh, my worry is, obviously, I don't want to put too much tension on this. I'm going to break something probably the sides. So I need to probably check to see if there's not something that is loose or maybe could be unattached on the sides from the neck to allow me to uh, push this back where it really should be. But I'm really, really glad to see that it's moving. That's been such a large part of this problem is that it was still stuck in some ways and wasn't allowing it to move back. That was the real, real kicker was what was holding it, what allowed it to move initially and then was no longer allowing it to move back. And now that I've taken out some of the bracing and made sure that the neck block was not still attached, it's moving. So we're doing good. We're on our way. So for a little bit longer, I need to work on the inside here and see what I can do to allow this to move a little easier. Well, I've been looking at this for a long time now and I've been kind of putting this off because I didn't want to get ahead of myself gluing this back up. Um, but I think we're ready to start doing some glue. I did just put a little bit of water in there, hopefully to thin the glue down a little bit so it gets all the way in there. I'm going to start doing one side at a time. Um, that's because this side is actually closer to where it needs to be. Uh, I've got this clamp on here. It's not real tight yet, but we're not very far off, and I've got some other clamps laying around. I'm hoping we can do this with relatively no issue. Obviously, uh, just gluing this crack is not going to uh, be solid enough to hold this really well. So I'm going to glue this crack, then I'm going to have to be fairly gentle with it as I glue the other crack and have to be fairly gentle with those until I really start gluing those braces back in and that's what will really hold this down. But I'm going to start right here. This paintbrush is moist so hopefully it'll help thin the glue. It also helps to kind of pump it. 
I'm seeing that I'm really gonna need something underneath that clamp to keep it from sticking. So we'll try and do that real quick. Wood glue on finish, I'm not worried about. Um, it comes off well enough and won't stick to the finish very well at all. Even wood glue on the inside, I'm not worried about. I can scrape it off. But uh, that wood glue on the cork will stick it to the finish really bad, and I'm going to have to scrape it off of there. I don't really want to do that. That's like perfectly lined up right now. Um, I kind of want to put a clamp right here. Let me see if I can find something real quick. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think what I can do, I think what I'm gonna try to do is squeeze this a little bit. I'm seeing that this still has some upward movement and because this is fairly firm, I think I can probably fit like a block and a wedge. To help drive that down. Yeah. So this cross clamp is fairly firm. It's not really going to go anywhere. It's not crazy tight, but when I put this block in this wedge, it'll help push down in the middle. Uh, help get get that all lined up good. I'm gonna give this some time to dry and then we'll move on. I think we're finally actually making progress. We're not uh, backtracking anymore to fix something. That's good. This sat for quite a few hours and I'm ready to glue the other side, I believe. we go I think I'll let that sit for a little while and then what we'll do is we'll flip it over and we'll start working on the internal braces again all right so this set up for quite a few hours um, it's getting a little late and I'm hoping to glue this up a little bit further so we have some more strength in it before I call it a night so I'm gonna glue this brace back in um, luckily I did most of the cleaning when I took it out and it came out fairly easy so I don't really have any cleanup to do uh, before I glue it back in, just got to get the glue in there. Except for the glue bottle is stuck. Well, the little glue bottle is stuck, but the big glue bottle is not. So, we're using the big one. Now I'll use a brush just to make sure it's coated over the whole surface or I want to glue this thing back down. I'll go ahead and do the back of the brace as well. Now I just gotta put this back in here. The, uh, the edges are angled, so I can actually still see which, uh, which side is which very easily. 
Um, I was having trouble finding some clamps that would fit all the way in through the sides. These sides are fairly tall. So I've got some blocks ready to push in here. I want to get this as close to the outside on the top as I can because that's where there's the most strength pushing on the top or clamping against the top. It started. I've been grabbing the other one. I think I need to set this down now so I'm not putting unnecessary tension on the top. I'll come around the other side. Now obviously we need to stick one in the middle. That's what these are here for, but I think they're gonna be too long. So I'm gonna have to find some shorter clamps. This one doesn't have any padding on it, so I gotta make sure I stick a piece of good leather in there. I don't want to tear up any part of this. I want to get this about center because I can very easily over tension this thing, but I want to get it nice and even. Pretty much just like that. That is looking good. I think I'm actually going to see if I can't find something to maybe just keep those pressed down on each side. That's probably actually pretty good uh, because I'm holding it down on each end and then in the middle. I'm not sure it's got much choice on where you know it can go other than right up against that brace. It was a quick cleanup. It made quite the mess on squeeze out, which is okay. I'm not too worried about that. I'll clean it up some more once it's dry with a chisel. I'm glad to see that brace is right back where it needs to be. It's pushed all the way up forward like it should be. That's looking really good. I'm really happy with that. Um, <clears throat> I'll see if I can't fit some of the little wood clamps in there. They might fit yet just to help even out that pressure. But I'm kind of doubting it. One will. See if we can get another one in there. That one's too long. See if we can't find a shorter one. I think we're looking good. Um, I'll let this sit overnight. It's uh, about one o'clock in the morning. So uh, first thing in the morning, I'll take this off and we'll start looking at probably putting the uh, sound hole reinforcement back on. Uh, we should be doing good. Finally getting this thing back together. I'm thrilled. Well, welcome to the next morning. We're all set up to keep going at this, and I'm gonna try to glue this sound hole reinforcement back in there. Um, so something I thought about was this uh, neck block on both sides, it wasn't glued down to the top. When I re-glued these cracks, that got glue in there, so that's made good um, gluing, so it's all solid in there now. This brace is very solid, I'm very happy about that. This is the one we're about to do. I'm going to do this real quick. Just 
drawing with pencil so I don't get too much glue outside of where I don't need it. And then we're good to go. I gotta get that whole thing pressed flat. Alright, that's actually gonna work pretty well. If I had more time, I would have thrown together a perfectly sized uh, sound hole clamp. But, um... <laughs> I didn't think about it until just a little bit ago, and then I had this, and this works. So it's pulling everything, the soundboard and the reinforcement all together. So it's gonna work just fine. We'll let this set up, uh, you know, quite a few hours. Make sure the glue is nice and set, and then we can move on. I'm just getting finished up cleaning this up, uh, scraping off any excess glue, and it's looking really good. I'm really happy with it so far. Um, I need to vacuum this out, and then we can start working on glue in the back on here. Um, so I'll go ahead and grab a little thing and clean this out, and then we should be good to start thinking about the back, I think. That's looking good. Um, I think we're ready to start thinking about the back here. Um, I'll, we'll do some light sanding on these sides to make sure everything has a nice glue surface. But we're really not too far off getting the back ready to glue back on here now that those braces are back in there. This thing's going together pretty quick, and I'm glad to see it. It's not uh, giving me much issue now, and that's uh, few and far between. So I'm going to start looking at the back, and we'll see where we go from here. All right, so I think we're ready to start gluing this thing up. Um, I've got a bunch of spool clamps out, and I'm only going to go up to the waist uh, just so that I can make sure I get the neck block all lined up perfect. So I'm going to start laying down some glue. I don't want to make a mess on the inside because once this is done, I'm not really going to be able to clean it up. I'll take a brush and... Uh, Just even it out. So we're covering the whole surface. That's looking good. I'm going to just wipe off the sides. Use my fingers. Ain't that worried about it. Once again, wood glue on finish is not a big deal. Comes right off. It's a little bit of water. But if I can avoid it, it generally goes better. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the top. I don't really have a place to set it on camera, or on the top, on the back. I don't really have a place to set it on camera, but it's just right over here. Mostly on the, uh, the block area. That's just the spot that I'm worried the most about. And then I'll use the brush to uh, wipe it on. Alright. I see we're getting glue running out. I don't want to make a huge mess. I don't really want to get it on the carpet. Let me moisten this towel and then see where we go from there. All right, I'm gonna start putting spool clamps on here. All right, so I think we're just about ready to do the top. It's a little bit of a mess right now um, because of the glue. I haven't cleaned it up yet. I'm gonna wait till the clamps are off and then clean it all up at once. Um, but I think we're ready to start doing the top part. You can kind of see I've got a clamp up here. This is actually holding uh, a bar. You can kind of see here. 
um, making sure the neck angle is right because if you don't check that while you put the back back on, the neck angle can move because the sides will flex and allow it to change. So that bar is just making sure that the neck angle does not move. That's why I did the bottom first and then set this up to do the top so that I know that the neck angle is going to be right where it should be. Now comes the fun part of getting the glue in there. All right, and then it's really hard to get the paint all or the paint. It's really hard to get the glue all the way back in there. So I can use this paintbrush to make sure that it's well spread. And then I want to make double, triple sure on the neck block that it is well stuck. So. All right. It's looking good. I'm wet this cloth down and do some quick clean up on what's already running. I got to use a regular clamp, not just the regu the spool clamps for the neck block because uh, I can get all the way in to where the neck block is really centered, put a lot better pressure on it. It tends to work a lot better. Then I can go back to using the spool clamps past that point. Well, that'll probably do it. Um, that clamp, the cross one, is uh, kind of pushing the sides in where it wasn't quite perfect. But it seems to be having some squeeze out all the way around, which is good. Um, I'll go through and do some cleanup. But I'll let this sit for a few hours. Um, it's not late enough that I probably won't come back to it tonight. And take the clamps off and get it cleaned up. But... I probably won't go any further than that tonight. Um, yep, we'll get this some time to dry. Quite a few hours, at least, you know, four or five. Um, and then I'll come back, take the clamps off, and get it cleaned up the rest of the way. So we should be doing good. I hope we're doing fine. I think it'll be good. Uh, this is a little bit nerve-wracking at this point. Um, you know, having put the back back on there, uh, making sure the neck angle stays right, especially now because we had to fix that. It, uh, it's a big deal. All right, we should be good. So now that we're starting to really put this thing back together, I still need to fix this binding here up at the uh, top where it's come loose. So I'm going to just put some glue in there and use these big long clamps to just clamp it down, I think. I'm using the uh, the canopy glue, the Formula 560 canopy glue. It works really good for plastic to wood, so I use it for most binding repairs. And it's uh, water-based, so it cleans up with water. Wiping it up to make sure we're actually making good contact. I don't really want to glue this up and it not be perfect. Actually, that's looking really good. 
Well, that's probably as good as I'm going to get that right now. There's a little bit of a spot there, but I think as I get this up here glued down, I can maybe stick something in there more, uh, a little closer and get that. But I'll let that uh, dry for a few minutes. I don't think this takes very long to dry, like 15 minutes or so. And then I can finish that up and we can get moving with this thing. So I think we're just about done with the structural problems with this guitar. Um, you know, we're like almost ready to start putting it back together and it really didn't have a whole lot wrong with it uh, before I took it apart besides the big thing. Um, I noticed as I was rubbing my hand across here, these frets are sticking out a little bit. We have a little bit of uh, fret sprout. So I was just gonna try and knock that off real quick. Already an improvement. Um, speaking of things that I had talked about before, I think I had talked about the bridge starting to come loose. Um, I've been looking at that a little bit now that uh, we're starting to get this thing back together. And I don't think it's something I'm gonna worry about right now. It's something uh, the customer can keep an eye out for if it gets any worse. But right now, it's not worth the time it would take for me to fix it, to fix it. I'm just gonna uh, kind of round those ends over now, make sure I don't have any flat spots. It was worse on that side than this side, so I'm not too worried about the base side. Plus you don't run your hand on the base side. Now I'm gonna take some high grit sandpaper and just, just do some final touch-ups on that. And just that edge. And hopefully that'll finish smooth anything else out. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, I think we're gonna start setting this thing up, actually. I don't think there was anything else I needed to do. Um, I might oil this board. It looks a little, maybe a little dry, so we'll do that. And then I, I think we're gonna set this thing up. Hopefully it goes well. So I believe we're all ready to start stringing this back up. I just put the saddle that uh, came out of it back in it. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a problem now. Um, we'll have to see as we get going here. I've also got all the pins out. They're sitting over here. So we can start putting this thing back together. I probably won't film a whole lot of stringing this up. 12 strings are not a whole lot of fun to string and it's not all that interesting to watch anyway. So just wanted to let you know where we were and that I started going. I did oil the board. I forgot to record that, but it did get done. So we are ready to start the setup. I'll go ahead and get the strings on here and we'll start looking at where we're at. So I just got this thing tuned up to pitch and I'm ready to measure the action on it. It's a little high. It's um, higher than I would like it to be. <laughs> um, I'm not real happy with that it's about 120 thousandths on the bass side about 110 thousandths on the treble side um there's a little saddle left to be taken off i could probably get away with lowering it 10 or 15 thousandths at the 12th fret um that'll put it well within range for a 12 string typically they are a little higher um so i think that's what i'm going to do is I'm going to take all this up apart again, pull that saddle out, take it just enough off to get that down, basically under a hundred thousandths. Um, and I think we should be doing good. All right, time to unstring this, even though I just strung it up. I won't bother filming this. I'll show you marking the saddle up, but uh, I'll get to that point now. So I've got this saddle pulled out of here. Um, and I've gone ahead and got the sides marked up with Sharpie. I just take the permanent marker and mark up the sides. I've also got my caliper set 
to 25 thousandths. I think that's the most I really want to take off of this. It's not crazy, crazy tall, so um, that's where I want to set this mark. And I just scratch a line in there. You can see that. That comes out really well a lot of the time. Sometimes it doesn't come out as well, and I think it's probably whatever the nut is made out of likes to fight me about it, but uh, this is bone, I think. It feels like bone, either some kind of bone or some kind of antler. Um, so that's good. It smells like bone. <laughs> but uh, so I'll, I'll just take this over to the sander, the disc sander, and knock it down to that line. So like all the way up till the black disappears and we should be doing good. We'll get this going back together. Well, I think we're just about done with this thing. Um, we lowered the action. I got this tuned back up. I checked the intonation real quick as well. And it's looking pretty good. It's not necessarily perfect, but um, I'm not going to bother doing anything with it on camera. We're sitting about 95 thousandths, maybe a little higher than that on the base side, which is okay. About the same on the treble side, which is fine, I think, for the 12 string. Um, it's obviously not preferable, but I really don't want to take the saddle down anymore. I'm realizing you can't see the saddle. It's, um, it's not low. It's not as low as I've made some, but it's lower than... It's at the bottom of where I think this guitar should be. Um, I'm going to do a quick recheck on that bridge to confirm my... Yeah, I don't think we should really worry about it for right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and get ready to play this thing. Um, there's probably a couple of things yet I want to do. to uh, make this perfect, but uh, getting this played and then uh, so I can finish up the video would help me out quite a bit. So I think I'm gonna clip these strings, go set up to play it, play it for you all, and then do a couple of last minute touches that I don't have to record. Well, I think this thing is in way better shape than when I first got it. Um, getting that neck back solid has helped us out a lot. It's playing really good, actually. Uh, now that it's really playing, I've noticed it's a very loud 12 string. I think, you know, that's quality build. So setup wise, it really didn't need much. Uh, lower that saddle just a hair, and it's it's pretty much normal for any 12 string. It's sounding real good. Um, I've got just a few more things I want to do to it just to make sure it's looking really good, uh, so I can send it back. So I'm gonna get to doing those. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this video here. Um, it's been <laughs> a fair bit of work on this thing, but uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.